<coughs> okay, continuing with the Captain America versus Batman uh, family battles. For the last one, for the villains, I thought, who is the, the most penultimate villain? When you think Captain America, you're not thinking, oh, dude, Batroc the Leaper. You know, you're thinking probably either Crossbones or Red Skull. So by far, gotta go with Red Skull. When you're talking about Batman, for most people, it's the Joker. It's not like Poison Ivy or the Riddler. Again, very classic villains, but it's never King Tut from the Batman TV show. No, it's primarily the Joker. So let's compare these two guys. Let's see who actually went in a fight. They have actually fought before. So I've been to a stalemate, because I guess Red Skull's death dust was the same thing as the poison that uh, Joker's flower produced. But as always, we've got the nine criteria to go through. Whoever ends up having more, again, if it's like a four to five, it's a relatively close fight. If you're looking like five to three, if you're looking like six to three, you know, seven to two, I've yet to have done a fight where it's, it's nine to zero. Nine to zero pretty much be that person who would just obliterate the opponent flat out. So we're going to begin first and foremost with intelligence. Look at these two. You know, the Red Skull is fantastic at removing variables. Where the Joker is the variable. It's like you have an engineer on one side, you have a saboteur on the other. You have a lawful evil genius on one side, using deity terminology, versus a chaotic evil genius on the other side. You have a guy who plans meticulously down to the last detail. Versus a guy who is going to take every single possible detail he can find and use that to wreck your plan. This is a really bizarre scenario. But what I'm seeing in this fight, I actually have to give the edge to the Joker. Everyone thinks the Joker is absolutely insane. And he does everything entirely random. It's really hard to plan to face somebody who at any point in time is going to do anything he feels like doing. At the same time, the Joker is relatively cognizant of the fact that he is entirely random. He is living, walking chaos. And against somebody who has rules and has regimen but is evil, the person who follows absolutely no rules at all is going to give him a definite headache. So I have to give the, the intelligence the Joker. Just because he's somebody who's ridiculously hard to figure out and to plan against. Fighting ability. You know, I've yet to really see the Joker put up a decent fight. He, it's more or less he's crazy and a lunatic that helps him out. Versus the guy who was actually trained in World War II and trained by the Nazis. So. Strength. You know, I'll, I'll be honest, as, as much as I think the Joker's a really toned sort of you know, villain. You're taking on someone who, again, is the first person in the Super Soldier Serum. Speed. Wiry, tone and crazy, again, versus someone with the Super Soldier Serum. Durability. Yeah, and we've seen the Joker get the crap beat out of him repeatedly, and almost be beaten to death by a crowbar. We've all seen him break his own neck. He comes back from those, however, again, the Super Soldier Serum is enhanced regenerative abilities. Invulnerability. I have yet to ever see the Joker wear any sort of tactical armor. First, the guy who enjoys wearing armor. And only wears some sort of protective gear because he knows people he fights tend to use guns. Joker, if you shoot the Joker, he's probably going to laugh it off. But... Again, as you, tell, as you can tell, the, the Joker's a great foil for Batman primarily because of his intelligence and the fact that he doesn't care about collateral damage. The person he's taking on is ridiculously well-skilled. You can already tell this is not looking good for the Joker at all. Okay, we are down to the last three things. Energy projection, distance fighting. You have somebody who has been trained by a ridiculous amount of people who has access to lots of military grade and specialty equipment in the Red Skull versus a guy who's essentially likes to primarily use guns, bombs, things that are fairly pedestrian. I hate to say that when it comes to the Joker, but against someone who has military special ops as well as things from Hydra and has worked enough with different sorts of 
cosmic level things, I have to give this to the Red Skull. Versatility. Now that one has to by far go to the Joker. So the Joker will use anything to his advantage at any point in time he ever possibly can. The X Factor. <clears throat> so looking through this, who do I think has the ability to change the way the fight is going? That's the Joker. I can see the Red Skull having the Joker pretty much beaten down. The Joker probably either breaking his hand to get away from the Red Skull, to give himself some space to think of something else to do, or probably breaking his own neck so that way the Red Skull couldn't do it, which would be enough to make the Skull kind of go, I had no idea who you are or why I'm fighting you. Why did you just break your neck? So, with that, you know, intelligence versus the X Factor, those things definitely go to the Joker because he is a legitimate crazy genius. And that normally is enough to take most people out of their game plan. However, he's taken on somebody who has got, you know, boom, right there. Someone who is a someone who is a a scientist, you know, Nazi era World War II veteran, who also has all the enhanced abilities that Steve Rogers has. So you got somebody who's who's crazy versus somebody who has worked with people who make the definition of crazy even more just insane. But these two were to fight in a relatively straight up one on one contest aside from joining forces and trying to rule the world together, Skull definitely has a huge advantage over the Joker. Now, at the same time, I thought about what I do this, taking their, their movie personas, and ironically, comparing the Hugo Weaving Red Skull from the Captain America movie versus the, the Heath Ledger character, you know, I, I see it kind of falling around the same way. You know, I, I don't see there being any difference between those two characters. From what we saw Hugo Weaving do in the movie, once he gained access to the Terrace Act, or Cosmic Cube, and he began to make, essentially, weapons that make you evaporate, that is a huge energy projection advantage against somebody who primarily used guns. And rocket launchers, you know, relatively pedestrian weapons. Intelligence Edge, I would still get that to the Joker. Fighting, strength, speed, durability, and vulnerability, they'll all go to the skull. There's just no way around it. You know, the Joker, for as crazy as he is, he is still just a regular person. If you were to give Joker the super soldier serum, that, that would be a horrific thing to actually see happening. Same with the versatility. All I gotta say is pencil trick. Out of all the things we saw Red Skull do in the movie, I don't see anything that was more of a, I'm gonna take this and kill somebody, as much as the pencil disappearing trick that Heath Ledger did. Versatility, you know, like, like I said, that, that falls under under Heath Ledger. And the X Factor, again, that falls under Heath Ledger. So, even taking the movie personas, there there's still enough in there that it still ends up becoming a 6-3 to three scenario. And with that, if the Joker and the Red Skull were to get into a fight, you know, I, I do picture the Red Skull probably taking it 3 out of 4 times.